everyone is just a quick little video to show anyone with a Honda CBF 1000 is this particular model the year 06 to 11 this bike here uh, some people may think that you have to remove all the fairings to get at the spark plug but it's actually quite simple the lower fairings have been removed but unnecessarily uh, to get at it all you have to do is remove the rear seat screw out the two screws on either side of the rear of the front seat and then it simply slides back and you remove the two front tank bolts those are 10 millimeters and the rear tank bolt across the back which is up and goes onto this little bracket in here just remove that completely now the main petrol feed line just don't remove that in case there's any issues but there has to be two breather pipes removed and a little fuel gauge wire the little fuel gauge wire hangs down here it's at the back of the tank and get a bit of light on that and then there's two breather pipes up and one on here and one on here just simply pull those off turn the tank around and i've secured it here with a cable tie so it can't go anywhere now you're going at plug number one very simple just push back this little breather pipe on number two I must remove the two 10 millimeter screws holding the ignition coil in place you can take, take this breather pipe off also just to push it out of the road it goes right along here and just pops onto the airbox right right there there we go just pops right on there just pop that off now if you want even more access, remove the two ignition coil wires. Mark one here, T for top. Just remember do one at a time, I've already done number one. There we go. Just enough out of the road. The plug socket is just the standard 16mm size. And the NGK plug reference is CR8. EH9 or 5666 stock code. I think the service interval needs is around about 15,000. Just slide the socket in, there's just about enough room. Just remember guys, no fairings at all has to be removed. Thankfully Honda thought a little bit about it. There we go. Not too bad for 18,000 miles worth of driving. remember to start these by hand guys just definitely don't want to strip thread in there once it's hand tight just a simple little quarter to half a turn just not very tight at all and imagine it's around about 20 newton meters 25 at the most just to crush the seal washer Obviously make sure no dirt or anything around your plug. And push it home till it pops into place. And this number is one and two. Three and four now. We have a coolant hose right over number four. I'm making it a little bit trickier, but we'll have to manage. And number three now is I see. That was actually coil number, lead number four on the other side. Let's pull that water hose back far enough. You may want 
to clip out the wiring loom to buy another little bit of space. Not much, but here we go. Number three looks like fun. This center part of the frame is actually over it a little. I may have to go with the really short extension, get it down low. That's number four. Should be just enough slack to pull number three lead right over. Just past the throttle cables and the wiring loop. There we go. Right, yeah, this will be the fun part. Right, for number three, you have universal joint here. Just taped the two pieces together, three pieces together to make sure it doesn't come apart. Because I don't want the aggravation of trying to pull that out with a magnet. Just to pop it in very carefully. Just about enough room. Throttle cables are the only thing holding you out from the frame there is just push those in a little. back out be sure not to catch anything there we go good job Carefully, just get that entered. Five millimeters, Honda, that would have been enough. That's plug number three. So that's them all done now. Take it out again very carefully. Right, just going to put everything back in, put the two plug leads in, pop the wiring limb back in again. And once you get to fitting the coil back on, I'll catch in with you then. I'll check in with the end. Right now, back on the other side, obviously the plugs are changed and the leads are back in. I'm just going to pop on this breather roof first, moving right under here. Just like that. There's a little bracket up in there it must go under pop it back on Put on a little wire clip that's the little bracket that goes under GoPro show it. Just there. It goes under that. Bend that back down. Back out here.
tie on the tank. Tank sort of just slides in here. That's I can't lift straight up because of these. Can't lift straight up because of these fairings here. Just pushing on the two breather pipes on the far side, big one and the little one. These pipes are actually easier access on the right hand side, that's it there. Just pull those off and push them back on again, obviously, when you're fitting the tank again. And then lastly, with the tank and everything connected, there's a little stay wire right here. So the tank doesn't tilt back too far. I don't know if you can see, there's a little bolt hole right in there. So I'll get that screwed on and I'll be back in a second. those two. We can back to this one. You may need to hold the bolt with a 10 millimeter nut if it's there, or sorry, spanner if it starts to spin, but that's fine. Now, I was telling you a little bit of it, this bike actually came to me with no lower fairing on it. But I didn't, I wouldn't have had to remove it, but I did have to remove this piece of either side. So if the tank clips into it there, this just makes it a lot easier. Pops in there, and a 10 millimeter bolt. Not a 10 millimeter bolt, a 5 millimeter hex head or on key head. Take the front seat, just simply slide it in. the rear of the seat we have two more little five millimeter hex head bolts just go right down in there rear just simply hooks on with these two tabs and then pops into the lock at the back here Lovely jibbly. Right, right. Just did a quick look around, make sure everything looks okay. Ignition on, fuel pump going, so everything's okay that way. Here we go. Singing like a bird. So guys, that was a quick little video just to show you how to change the plugs in this bike if you had any doubts. It wasn't too difficult, just number three, the access is quite tight just because of the frame running over the top of it. But thanks for that Honda, that was great. But yeah guys, if this was any use to you and you liked the video, please give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And we'll see you next time.